It is a great joy to have you here at East Heights where we love God, love neighbor, and serve the world. And we hope that you'll help us remember that you're here by signing in on those postcards that you hopefully picked up when you, when you stopped in um, to get your, your bulletin. You can then just leave those in your pews following the service and we will then know where you are. We also want to invite those of you who are joining us online. We would love for you to make a comment so that we can know that you're here with us. It is a great joy today to have our chancel ringers with us, and they're going to be offering our prelude. So let us now center our hearts for worship as they play.
Would you please stand as you are able and join with me in our call to worship? Oh Lord, as we come into worship, instill in us a sense of gratitude for our church, for its people, and our community. Oh God, help us to be good stewards of ourselves, our families, and all that we care about. As we sing and we pray and listen to scriptures read, help us to be aware of how it all comes together. O oh Lord, open our hearts and minds so that we become good stewards of our church and of our spiritual lives. Let us through Christ be stewards of our world, our society, and the traditions of giving and sharing our faith and love for others. O oh Lord, give us the confidence and the willingness to share, to care, and to pray for your infinite grace. Grant us your blessing. Thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us now turn in our hymnals or look onto the screens for hymn 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. Amen. You may be seated. So I have a special message for the kids or for those who are young at heart. And I have an envelope here that has a little bit of the money from one of the children's offerings in Sunday school. You know, we do offerings in Sunday school and we do offerings in church. And um, I have a nickel and I have a penny. Let's see what else I have in here. Oh, I have a dollar, right? Now, I know, big money, right? Yeah, big money. You know, some people might put, like, it might put in an offering. I know somebody did this last week. Somebody put in $20 on our Wednesday night children's offering, and that money is going to go and um, celebrate, cr help, help the inmates at El Dorado Prison, right, celebrate Christmas. The kids are very, very motivated by this. They're learning about how Jonah learned that people get a second chance with God. And so we're going to make sure that the inmates also know that they get a second chance with God. 
I want to ask you a quick question. When it comes to this money, did the person who put the dollar in or the nickel in or the penny in, who gave more? Who gave more? Would you guess? Someone says a dollar? Okay. All right. Well, you know, I want to tell you a story about when Jesus was at the synagogue. It's kind of like the Jewish church, right? When he was at the synagogue, he was watching as people put money into the offering. And he saw the people who had a lot of money putting in dollars, big stuff, right? The really big gold coins. And then he saw a lady that was a poor widow, a lady that didn't have a husband. She was all alone. And she put in two coins that add up to be a penny. And do you know what Jesus said? Do you remember what Jesus said? Do you remember? Who gave more? The people who put in a lot of money or the person who was poor who put in two coins? Who do you think, Owen? The late her, right? The, the widow, right? The lady who put in two coins that equaled a penny. That's exactly what Jesus said. And he said, the, the people who put in the big money, they gave out of their wealth. He said, the woman who gave her two coins, she gave her entire life. That was all she had. Today we're going to be talking about money again. We're going to be giving our, our estimates of giving card for the upcoming year. And I would just like for us to think about that. Think about, are we giving our whole life to God? Are we giving our whole life to Jesus when all that we say and all that we do? Because that's the ultimate goal, right? That is the ultimate goal. Let's have a prayer. Oh God, we thank you so much that you love us, that you forgive us, and we thank you, God, for the things that you've allowed us to have in this world. We pray that when it comes to giving, we won't necessarily be all that concerned about the amount, but that we will remember that we should give our whole self to you. That's the real challenge, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Miss Hallie is here to take any kiddos who would like to go up to East Heights Kids today. We're learning about Jonah. We'll see you later. Um, I do have some announcements for you today, and hopefully you're getting the weekly e-news so that you know what is happening here in the life of the church and getting more detail. If you're not, let us know. You can make a note on that postcard, and we'll get in touch with you to get your information added. But we would like to just highlight a few of those things. The Family Life Sunday School class would like to invite you to join them. Next Sunday and the following week, they're going to be talking about the pandemic and the church and um, talking about things that we've had to do differently, things we might want to continue, things that we've learned, um, maybe even challenges that we've been facing. So they would invite you to meet with them at 945 on Sundays in the Covenant Room off of the coffee house. Speaking of the coffee house, it is open now. So if you'd like to stop for some coffee or a treat, um, please do stop by and support them. We are picking up or having you pick up um, Thanksgiving bags and fill them up with the food that's on the list and bring them back. And we'll be giving those out to families in need during this Thanksgiving season. So if you're looking for a way to serve, that's a wonderful way to do it. Likewise, we are collecting dental kit items for Grace Med Health Clinic. When they go out and do community dental cleanings or, or dental checks, they like to be able to give the folks who come um, a, a packet of toothpaste, toothbrush and dental floss. And so if you have any of those items, we sure would like them. And the youth are going to be putting those together for them. We hope that you're planning to come to this afternoon's trunk or treat. Even if you don't have kids, it's going to be a lot of fun. The weather's going to be lovely. Um, we've got the scouts who will be there doing a free hot dog dinner. Uh, the CDO is going to be having a bake sale with some yummy treats. And of course, cotton candy and lots of other candy, and um, we would love for you to join us this afternoon if you'd like from 5 to 7. Today our Family Promise guests arrive. You probably remember that Family Promise is a ministry for those families in transition who do not have homes. And so the churches in the area have all taken a different week, and this is our week to host. Um, we do this four times a year. So we hope and, and ask that you would pray that our families would feel the hospitality of this wonderful congregation this week. We also just want to put the need in front of you um, that we do need two new coordinators or three. Um, we are to a point right now, if we don't find some new coordinators, we're going to have to think about um, entering into a different relationship with Family Promise. So if you needed a nudge, this is your nudge. Um, to consider stepping forward and to help us provide some leadership in that. You can speak with me or you can talk to Bart or Kathy um, this week. 
Also just wants to let you know that next Sunday is our children's and youth Sabbath. The children and youth are going to be um, helping to lead the service. The youth are going to be talking about their summer mission trips. And so you will not want to miss this um, Sunday. It is Superhero Sunday as well. So if you have a superhero costume that you would like to wear, you may, you may dress up. I think some of our kiddos will. Um, so we, we hope that you'll come next week and it will be a, a really a meaningful time to hear from our children and our youth. I want to move now on to some of our um, celebrations. We want to thank those of you who had a part in the laundry party ministry this past week. Uh, we had one family come to that from Jefferson Elementary. Also, just want to lift up um, the East Heights kids have been collecting offerings on Sundays and Wednesdays. We spoke to that a little bit. They've sent $9 to provide Bible translations to the rural poor in China through the United Methodist Advance. And then they collected $20 for Pet Promise, which um, provides foster care for pets for whose families are in Family Promise, trying um, to get their own home. So we want to thank them for that. Let us now go to God with prayer. We worship and adore you, God of all creation. For you hold in your hands all that is or ever will be. There is nothing that does not belong to you, including our very lives. We give you thanks for all the ways in which you have blessed us. We thank you for the abundance of creation and for the creativity that makes life easier for us all. We thank you for the inventors and the innovators that find new ways to use your gift of creation. We thank you for Jesus who came and reminded us not to confuse the gift with the giver. Help us always to use your gifts wisely and to not allow them to become idols in our own lives. We know that many of your children do not have a basic share of the good things you have given us. They do not have enough to eat or to wear. They do not have adequate housing. As we enjoy what we have been blessed with. Help us to remember that Jesus came and lived among us as one of the poor. Help us to focus our lives on you and to share the good things of this earth with others. As you reach out in love to those who are without, enlarge our hearts that we may give freely and joyously. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let the church say amen. I just appreciate that. Every hour I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I belong to thee. And I would submit to you, this is a wonderful way to approach offering, recognizing our need for God and his blessing in our lives and how we might give in response to all that God has blessed us with. You know, East Heights has supported the Family Promise Ministry, and we're celebrating five years of that work and ministry in our church and our community. And we've also supported the Thrive Ministry since 2013. Now, during this time, members of our congregation have provided meals and child care, mentoring and overnight hosting, and just provided a safe place for people to come to gather to learn and grow and also to lay their head. In the video that we're about to see in a moment, Amanda Buckley shares how both of these programs have truly made a difference in her life. Let's take a look. I wouldn't be where I'm at today as far along in my journey as I am right now if it wasn't for this church because like it was part of those healthy relationships and growing and trying to change myself and become a better person and make changes to become a better person that if this church wasn't here I mean I wouldn't have those I wouldn't even have had those thoughts ideas and seeds put into my head you know like oh okay well look at this is what poverty does and let's get you out of it I wouldn't even have had those the training from getting ahead or anything to understand those differences it was very scary um, it was something I wasn't really sure about what was gonna happen um, there was a lot of those unknowns you know that caused fear and anxiety and stuff but um, when I got here it was really nice I really liked the church and I got comforted um, I felt safe I felt like I wasn't in harm's way and I felt like you know there actually is people out here that are trying to make a difference and help people especially coming from the background I came from you don't really when you're in that kind of destructive cycle of behaviors you don't really tend to have the healthier relationships where somebody's actually trying to help you grow and become a better person I started off being a leader which is the person who is walking through poverty and I've grown to become an ally and I get to help somebody else get out of the same situation. Amazing, they were absolutely amazing and caring and generous and were just there for me. If I was having a bad day, they would come talk to me. Um, they would definitely share the word, pray with me and I am a, I am a believer too so that helped but it was just so nice to just feel like you're accepted in family even though I have this crazy background you know and I still was accepted with open arms and that was amazing I appreciate every single one of you and everything you've done and especially opening up your church to family promise and to thrive because without it I mean my life would be probably have gone a way different direction making a difference you know as I think about this, I'm reminded of Jesus' invitation. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I, I'm so grateful for this congregation who opens its doors to those who are struggling. And we can see how Amanda started out homeless and, and, and coming here and into other churches in Wichita and working to get out of homelessness. And then she was a part of the Thrive Ministry that helped her to take steps out of poverty. Now she's going to classes in school at Wichita Tech, and, and now she's also helping others to take steps out of poverty. You're helping to make a difference. You made a difference in her life, and you're making a difference in others by the gifts that you give every week to support the mission and ministry of our church. And so I just want to invite you, whether you're online or in person, whether you give uh, through our website or give regularly in the offering plate in the gathering area outside our doors here however you do it thank you for your giving spirit you are truly helping to share the love of Jesus in life-changing ways as you listen to this next musical selection and it fills your spirit 
I invite you just to consider how you've been blessed and then give in response. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Will you please stand as you're able for our doxology? Will you pray with me? Holy and merciful God, it's with great joy and thanksgiving that we praise you. We praise you for all that you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that these gifts, our hearts, our hands, and all of who we are, 
might help to make a tangible difference in the lives of those not as fortunate as we are. Lord, keep us mindful of all you have given to us so we might be generous to others. We give with gratitude and we give through the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, friends, this morning uh, we are concluding our series on the generous life, money, time, and how we spend them. So if you're in person or online, I just hope that you're blessed by our time together. I hope that we'll have some new understanding of how we can be generous in our living and our giving. And over the past several weeks, we have examined principles that are found in Scripture for how we can handle our finances and do it well, and also how we can be generous as generosity helps us draw, draw us closer to the very heart of God. And so this morning we're going to talk about supporting the ministry of our church. Uh, you might say giving freely, knowing that what we give helps to transform lives, helps to uh, worship the Lord, and helps to create an atmosphere where people can be welcomed and embraced with the love of Jesus. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you my first experience, one of my very first memories of giving. And, and you remember when I was sitting in that pew in Pineville Baptist Church and the, the offering plate was coming by and I, I remember it's the Jaws soundtrack was coming, dun, 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 as the plate was getting closer. And I looked at my wallet, I only had five bucks. And so I had this decision, am I going to go to McDonald's or am I going to put the five bucks in their offering plate, Right. I, I share this because it kind of highlighted for me the tension sometimes we have between giving and also meeting our own needs or doing our own things with our money. We have this uh, conflict between generosity but also this uh, desire to meet our own needs. And I certainly felt that pull myself. I would share with you that over the course of my life and as I've grown in connection with Christ, uh, my spirit towards generosity has changed, amen? You know, I, when we were working in Salina as a children and youth director there, Salina, Kansas, at Church of the Cross United Methodist, uh, we were first starting out, and this was a, a challenging time, and we didn't give a whole lot to the ministries in support of the church. But over time, we started looking at giving systematically and making it a part of uh, what we do um, every month. And so we've been able to incorporate uh, tithing into our lives, and we give on the 15th and the last day of the month, and we've been doing this now for over 15 years. But we've also been able to be blessed and give in other ways. We've supported children and youth ministries of our church. We've been able to support uh, the, the grocery ministry at the Delano District and, and other ministries. And I share this to you mindful of this. Do you remember uh, Jesus' teaching in Matthew? It, he talked about the hypocrites, those people that make a big deal out of their, their giving. They blow a horn to show when they're giving. And I'm not trying to do that. I hope you hear this. It, it's just to show that uh, you can start somewhere. You can start very tight and, and holding back. But uh, over time, as you have Christ in your life and, and you're seeking to live generously in response to his blessing in your life, things can change. And you can be more generous, not just in, in your giving, but every aspect of your life. And, and I believe that, that generosity and, and giving is a part of uh, discipleship. It's part of what mean, it means to grow as a follower of Jesus, to give in reflection of all that he has given to us. And I also realize this is a, a difficult, challenging conversation. It's not easy f for us to talk about money and finances. In fact, it's one of those eye rollers that we experience when we come to church, when we talk about money. But I believe it's important. Because we are called to be good stewards and caretakers of our finances. To uh, uh, organize our, our, our finances uh, so that we can have space to be a blessing to others. And so if you're a guest here this morning, just realize that we're, we're talking about this because it's important. And I would submit to you that uh, if you're, you're a, a person that's new here, uh, this might be a blessing to you to, to learn how to organize and structure your finances uh, because it, it can make a difference in your life 
but it might make a difference in somebody else's life as you're a part of a church and seeking to share the love of Jesus with your resources. Now, we've talked uh, uh, quite a bit about uh, how, how Scripture speaks to money and finances and how we use them. In fact, you know, if you search the Scriptures, there are 2,300 verses that speak to finances and how we use them. And Jesus talked about how money and the way we handle it can really affect us spiritually. So learning to handle our finances from a, a biblical perspective is part of discipleship. It's part of what it means to grow as a follower of Jesus. And then it, it's also that call to be generous with our lives and, and our resources. Uh, we may believe that, um, that uh, money is something that we keep tr- quiet. Uh, it's a difficult conversation, but how about this? I believe that in difficult conversations, if we approach them in an understanding and loving way, we can learn and grow. I don't think we should steer away from difficult uh, aspects of our lives and and our faith. But if we uh, do approach it in an understandable and loving way, we can all learn and grow. So that's my hope here this morning. You know, uh, one of my favorite scriptures uh, is in Proverbs Uh, is uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now, you're familiar with that. It's the scripture that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on or rely on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will guide your path or make your path straight. I really appreciate that is because what part of what that means is honor God with all your life in all your ways, and that would include money. And the reason why I say that is because if we go two verses down, two verses later, it speaks to directly how we honor God with our resources. And so Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 now reads this. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats with overflow with good wine. So any of the wine lovers here, this is a great message for you. Amen? Well, seriously, what he's saying is as you honor the Lord, uh, we will experience blessings both material, materially and spiritually. And the concept, and maybe you've heard this, we're going to talk about a couple of uh, church words here. Uh, one of them is this idea of first fruits and what that means. And then we're going to talk a little bit about tithing and, and what that means for our lives. Uh, and even though it's not part of uh, the New Testament and what we're called to do there, how it can help us structure and organize our finances. And so the concept of first fruits is rooted in biblical times. In the Old Testament, back in the t- times when they had a, a farming economy, an agrarian society. And harvest time was huge for people back then. And when it came to har- the harvest, it was a culmination of a year's of work or, or many months of work. It was blood, sweat, and tears. And, and, and God instructed his people, the Israelites, to take the first and the best and offer it as a, 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 a praise and, and thanks offering to God. And, and, and he did this, God instructed this, so that people would start to put him first in their lives. They'd be trained to recognize that God's the source of their blessing, and then they were called to give their first and the best in response. And so this was the spirit, not giving the leftovers or, or, or just a small amount, but giving the first and the best, because God gives us his very first and his very best. And so this was the spirit of how, how um, it, back in the early days, followers of God were, were, were um, familiarized with this spirit of giving. Not the leftovers, but the best. Now in our day, we don't really have that opportunity. There isn't necessarily a harvest and uh, fruits and vegetables or grain and, and cattle to give. But I think we can approach things uh, in a spirit in the same way. Now, we might get a bonus that was unexpected or even planned for. We might take a portion of that and give it to God. We might take um, uh, some, some of our tax return and, and give it to God, recognizing that we just want to take a moment to thank God for the many blessings in our lives. Or maybe some of us have, heard, uh, have uh, saved 15 or more percent on their car insurance. 
That was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. Online, you can just give me a thumbs up for that. How's that? Well, seriously, these are all examples of how we might take steps towards giving God our best and be thoughtful about giving the first fruits. Well, now we can turn to take a look at tithing and how that um, can be a blessing and give us at least a form or a format to give and, and to uh, be generous. Now, um, tithing would be more like a systematic plan to give. And, it, and we know that uh, tithing is a tenth of all that we had. So we're going to plan to give a tenth of our resources to the church. And, and it's a way of saying thank you. It's a way of honoring God and helping us to place God uh, first in our lives with things that matter most. And finances represent car payments and, and homes and, and college and food and shelter, all these things that are important to us. And we're going to take a portion of that and say, God, I, I place this in your hands to the work of your kingdom. Now, tithing is different in that it is a plan to give. It's systematic. And, and some of us here uh, give uh, uh, regularly, maybe on the 15th and the end of the month or whatever that wor uh, works out for you. Some give at the end of the year their full tithe or um, give at the beginning. Whatever that works, you're, you're thinking about uh, what you're going to give to the church and making a plan to do it. And we're not bound by this uh, concept of the tithe, but it might give us a great picture of how we might be systematic in our giving and in our response to God's call to generosity. And it really doesn't matter how, or, or how you give or that approach, it's that we're seeking to be generous and taking steps towards generosity in our lives. It's a spiritual discipline like prayer and reading the scripture and service in the church. Giving helps to connect us with the heart of God who gives us his best and give a, gives us his all. And I want to share that it's not just about the giving. There are blessings that we can receive when we're generous. And, and the first blessing is it helps us to, uh, to orient ourselves and to honor God. The Hebrew word for honor is to weigh down or make heavy. And so what we're called to do is weigh down or make heavy our honor for God, to give him praise and thanks and, and recognize his presence in our lives. We weigh him down or honor him with our lives and our wealth. We honor God in our giving because it helps us to put God first, not last or in the middle, but first. Remember the scripture, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength. Put God first in your life and then love your neighbor as a result. Now, it also helps us, this spirit of generosity, helps us to set our priorities, to get things in line and orient ourselves so that we have capacity or margin to give. You know, think of this. We give our time and our, our energy and our resources to the things that matter to us. If you're a sports lover, maybe it's a college or a, a professional team, uh, we're going to give money to, to the seats and, and wearing the, uh, the colors and, and uh, going for those uh, um, you know, barbecues in the, in the parking lot, all that kind of stuff. We're going to give our time and resources to those things because they're something of value. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if we have it skewed and, and we're doing all those kind of things and, and don't have margin or space uh, for generosity and giving to other causes, certainly to giving to um, the church and uh, giving to God, well, then I think we might have our priorities uh, um, upside down a little and, and need to really consider that. You see, if you look at your time and you look at your calendar and your, your checkbook, you're really going to see where your values are. And Jesus often taught that where our heart is, is going to be the places uh, where, where our resources are, where our treasure is. And, and God wants our heart. And so when we, uh, when we place money in the offering plate, when we give systematically, it helps move our light, heart and align our heart with God, who is generous and giving and loving to us all. Now, generosity also helps us to place our trust in God. Just like back in the days of the Israelites, when they made their first fruits, that was their first and their best. They were saying, Lord, I trust you uh, with this and all the rest. I trust you with my life. I'm going to put you first. 
And there's a step in that. It's not easy. Whether it's pulling that first five bucks out of your wallet or, or giving more and more as, as you move forward, there's a challenge there. There's a tension. Am I going to have enough? Will I be able to make ends meet? This helps us to trust God and, and grow in our faithfulness. And then finally, the last blessing, and there's pr- many more. I'm just lifting up four that I think might speak. The last blessing is that it leads to joy. God calls us all individually and as a church to be generous because it makes us more like God. It, it, it leads us to the heart of God who gave and who, who continues to give for each one of us. Even for those that, that turn their back on God and, and might not ever want to know God, God continues to give and offer His love. So when we are, are giving, we can experience the joy of that, knowing that we're drawing closer to the heart of our Lord. When we are generous, we experience joy, just like in the video we saw earlier with Amanda. Because we, when we give, lives can be changed. Hope can be restored. Opportunities can be given that might not otherwise be there. Our gifts can make a difference. And it's pretty awesome when you know that you're part of something greater than yourself. There's joy in that. You know, last year, I, I shared in the sermon an interview that we had uh, with um, Gerald Blackford. Now, he spoke about his approach to generosity and, and giving the church, to the church. Now, Jan, Gerald passed away in July, but I asked uh, his wife, Lou, if I might share this video again, because I think it gives us a great approach to how we might look at giving and generosity in our own lives. Let's take a look. One of my favorite things is Dorth Coombs, which was a member here, always got up on pledge drives, and he was one of his sayings was, it's amazing, God gives us 100%, and I only have to give 10% back, and I get to keep 90%. And I've remembered that for 45 years. I don't look at the amount that I'm going to get back because I give so much. Um, I feel blessed every day. It's a blessing to live here, a blessing to get up in the morning and feel safe. It's a blessing to be able to come to church, to have a great church and a great staff. Blessed with a great wife. Um, It's just a blessing every day. And so it's, that's not tied to any amount. You have to feel comfortable with the amount that you're giving. Not feel like it's a burden, but at the same time, feel like you're doing your share of that giving. Now, many of you know Gerald and his wife Lou have been members of this congregation for over 50 years. They've been active in it, serving on committees, um, being a part of pledge drives and capital campaigns. Uh, They were just uh, very generous folks. And, And I would submit, really wouldn't want to make a big deal out of what they do. There's a humility there. But I would shift and say at um, Gerald's uh, service, there were countless stories of his generosity, how he would go and take uh, homemade ice cream to people's homes or or, uh, uh, cinnamon rolls and oranges at Christmas and how he was a part of so many different activities in the community. He lived generously with not just um, his actions but also his financial resources. And, and many of our people in our congregation, online and in person, are, are, are living that same way. I just lift this up to show that it might give us a picture of how we might live and give and how we might live a life of generosity and kindness to others. You know, one of the challenges, though, is how do we live that out? And what some guides, maybe uh, many of us... Uh, We'll say, where do I start? And, and what is this really, this concept of tithing? And how can I incorporate it in my life? Well, I wanted to just give us a, a visual here, a demonstration of what that might look like. And here we have uh, t- uh, nine red apples and then one uh, green golden delicious apple. Now, the, the red apples, they represent... Uh, as uh, Gerald was saying, that, that 90% that we can do whatever we want with, right? But I would submit to you, if we want to follow that, that um, picture of the, 
the 10 10 80 principle right 10 percent to god 10 percent to savings and then we use 80 percent for for housing and clothing uh, for food to meet our needs uh, this might be a principle or way that we can approach our living and our giving but here's the challenge and we've seen this throughout our country we've seen this in difficult financial times even right now Many of us, and I, I'm, I'm saying this as a, a, a one of the many of us, we challenge with how we organize that 80%, don't we? We've seen it. We, we're not necessarily always good stewards of the eight apples that we have. And so what happens is uh, when, when uh, things hit that are unexpected, the car breaks down or, or we have an, uh, a, plan for, uh, a health crisis that we didn't plan for, you name it, well, um, that, 80 starts to, uh, that 80% starts to crunch, right? The apples start to get fewer and fewer. And so then we crowd into this one, the savings one. And then when that one runs out, well, we move to this one. And we may, I would submit, maybe move to this one before we move to the others, But here's what happens, what this looks like is we say, you know, life has been a challenge and and, uh, we even have more challenges. I know I need to give, but, you know, my son needs uh, tires on his truck. We take a bite out of this. Then we say, you know what, Um, the HVAC system just tanked in the house and there's no margin now. You can see how challenging this is, right? My mom told me not to eat with my mouth full, so I'm trying to listen, mom. But then we also look at, we've got all this, and life is hard, and it's been stressful. We haven't had a vacation in years. So pretty soon, we take more and more bites out of this apple. And all we give God left is what's left. And maybe there's not much. And we have this desire, and we know in our hearts that we are supposed to be good stewards of of this uh, 90%. Instead of giving God our first and our best, we give him what's left. And I lift this up not to make us feel guilty or, or feel pressure, but to show how easy it can be um, to give God what's left instead of what's best. And my hope and prayer is that we might take this principle of tithing and, and look at our finances and look at the things that we might do to adjust our priorities and adjust our resources that we, so that we can have more margin, so that we can have space to save for the rainy day, so we're not relying on credit cards and all that mess. There's no judgment here. It's just a reality in our lives. But there is a blessing. If we can be good stewards with this, then we can give God a really nice gift, a a blessing, a a, a gift that says thank you for my life and and your presence in it. And then we can be a part and work towards being a part of God's uh, generous work in our church and our community. Because this represents right here ministry. It represents lives changed, Bible studies. It represents the opportunity to worship. And it also represents our ability to go out in the world to make a tangible difference in the lives of people. And so this matters. However you choose to orient and uh, structure your, your life, your giving, and your generosity, I hope you'll take a step wherever you are. Whatever's going on in your life, you'll take a step to be more generous, to be more systematic. And knowing this, that as we seek to be, honor God in this way, we can't help but experience a blessing in our lives. Knowing that we're part of a greater work. Knowing that we're part of God's um, uh, saving uh, work in the world. But also knowing that we're being good stewards, caretakers of what we've been blessed with. It can happen materially, but it certainly can happen within our hearts. And so I hope that you're, you're, you'll um, take to heart this as we look at our, our um, stewardship campaign and the, the pledge cards that probably everybody has by now or they've been mailed to you. If you're online, you can go online actually, and there's a field there on our website where you can fill out the pledge card. You don't even have to mail it in or do anything. But if you have your pledge card here, 
And if you're thinking about what you're going to give to the church, many folks have already given uh, their pledge cards already. Thank you so much for that planning. But I want to invite everybody here online, and, and I've been talking about this uh, to our congregation for a couple weeks now. Think about what you're going to give, how you're going to be systematic in that giving, and knowing that God is going to guide you and, and ask God to help you to be faithful to that pledge so that we can to continue the good work of our church. There's a lot of need out there. There's a lot of suffering and a lot of darkness. My hope and prayer is that you'll all join together, all of us, so that we can be the light and the hope to shine uh, a light of Jesus into the dark places of our world and lives will be changed. Will you pray with me? Holy God, thank you so much, Lord, for, for your word and for your presence and your spirit. And most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins, who lived a life of generosity and kindness and sacrifice. Lord, in this time, help us to walk in that spirit, to give as we're able, to give with a spirit of generosity, knowing how much we've been blessed with. Help us, Lord, not just to give financially, but to be willing to offer kind words and, and a generous spirit to people that may not ever return it to us. But in a small way, Lord, help us to reflect the love of your son, Jesus Christ, in our daily lives. So bless the, these pledge cards, bless the offerings of our church, and bless us as we seek to be a shining light in the dark places of our world. We lift up our prayers now. We give you thanks. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You now to turn into your hymnals or watch on the screen for our closing hymn, Fourth in Thy Name, O Lord. It's hymn number 438. Would you please stand as you're able? Friends, I want to thank you, whether you're online or here in person. Thank you so much for your presence here today. 
I truly hope that you were blessed as we sang these wonderful songs of our faith, as we prayed for one another, as we prayed together, as we explored the scriptures, and now we're inspired to go out into the world. Go now with the joyous love of Jesus on your hearts. Go now to be generous and rich in good deeds. And as you head out into the world, May you put a smile on somebody's face. May you offer them hope in the way you interact with somebody. And as you leave, know this, that your God goes with you now and always. Have a great week. Amen.